Hi, this is Lane at Liberty. Friction helps me to stay on this bike, move against the surface, and allows me to stop. In many physical processes, however, friction is wasteful and causes energy losses. Even worse, friction increases faster than the amount of work that we put in. As I try to bike faster, a larger and larger fraction of my work is wasted on overcoming friction. Unfortunately, fracking is no exception. Despite our use of friction reducers, friction causes pressure losses in the pipes and in the fracture, adding to horsepower requirements during pumping. Friction also hides from us what is going on downhole, making it harder to understand what pressures we're dealing with inside the frack. 20,000 feet of pipes and poor connections separate a surface pressure measurement from the net frack pressure we want to know. Some items that relate the two, highlighted in green here, are very predictable or relatively easy to measure accurately. Other things highlighted in red are not predictable at all during pumping. These items are all associated with friction, in the well, through the perforations and the near well bore connection between the well and the far field fracture. In our industry, there's a significant focus on pumping as much of the time as possible. When we do, just like with this bike pump pressure, friction causes the pump pressure to fluctuate significantly. That is mostly because the rate changes continuously. As you see here, this makes it impossible to observe the tire pressure. But there's a simple solution to observing tire pressure. Stop! When I stop injecting into the tire, friction disappears and the pump pressure becomes equal to the tire pressure. About 60 psi here. This is a cartoony representation of what happens for a single pump cycle. I'm showing the pump pressure on the bottom, the bottom right, friction over the valve and the tire pressure on top. During pumping, extra friction over the valve and tube elevates the pressure on the pump side in comparison to what happens inside the tire. Once pumping stops, friction over the valve disappears quickly and the tire pressure and pump pressure become the same. The same is true for a frack job in a horizontal well. Stop pumping and all friction generally disappears very quickly. A shutdown makes it simpler to determine net pressure inside the fracture. You can also do a shutdown following a step down test, through which you would be able to determine the three main friction components. In summary, separating friction from frack pressures during a horizontal well frack job is tough, as friction components are big and unpredictable. Separating the impact from friction components is easiest during a shutdown, when friction components zero out. This helps frack modelers to better understand what happens downhole. This was Lane at Liberty. For more information, please visit us at libertyfrack.com. Thank you for watching.